Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. Um, I'm just going to uh, wait for about a minute as people um, join in and get connected uh, so that you're aware um, this session will be recorded. Um, feel free at any point during the session to ask questions through the Q and A. Um, we'll just give it another moment or two and then we will get started. All right, it's looking fairly stable at the moment. I'm sure um, as more people join, uh, they can listen in, but we may as well make a move. So my name is Francis. I work with the Future Students team at the ANU. Um, thank you for joining this first webinar as part of our series, our ongoing series, um, while the ANU direct applications are open. Um, I will start by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet and tune in today um, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So this session really is designed to be an introduction um, to the ANU. Uh, some of you may have heard myself or one of my colleagues from the Future Students team um, speak at a school that you've been to or at an event that you've been to in the past. Um, so this will be a bit of an update for you, or you might be completely new to this and hopefully you'll find out some interesting information about the university as a whole and also about the application process. Um, you can ask questions at any point during the uh, presentation. You can put them into the Q&A. Um, I probably won't be able to address them as we go along, um, but I will try and answer as many of them at the end of the session as I possibly can. Um, this session is also being recorded. It will be made available on our ANU experience YouTube channel. So we'll start with um, some information about ANU. So the Australian National University being located in Canberra. Um, we know that a lot of students' experience of Canberra is um, family or on a holiday or maybe on a school trip um, and you visit those big uh, sort of attractions uh, like Questacon, maybe the War Memorial or Parliament House. Um, and certainly ANU actually fits rather nicely into the, that list. We are a national institution. We, we are recognised alongside of um, the National Museum and Parliament House and the War Memorial as uh, a, a national institution that belongs to um, and works with the people of Australia. We are the number one university in the country and we are 31st in the world, according to the QS ranking system. Um, that reflects the quality of research that our academics perform. 95% um, of the research by ANU academics is at or above world standard. The advantage to our students um, is that you get to learn directly from these people, these academics, these lecturers are the people um, actually delivering your tutorials, your lab classes um, and your, your overall university experience. We have a relatively small student body, um, approximately 11,000 or so students are enrolled as undergraduates um, completing a bachelor's degree, are uh, enrolled as postgraduates completing a master's or a PhD. Um, so about 20 to 25,000 students. We are actually a very small institution. Um, 
uh, again, that advantage is that you have really great access um, to your lecturers, your tutors and academics. Our average student to staff here, staff ratio is around 15 to one. So when you do go into your classes, um, particularly those, those really dedicated classes where you would have discussions um, in tutorials or, or be doing um, involved experiments in lab classes, uh, you actually can talk to your tutors and academics quite closely, ask lots of questions, um, and have a really personal impact on your program and your learning. We do have, as I said, a very qualified, very highly motivated staff um, at ANU. They are there to support and help all of your learning, whether you want to get involved in research, um, go overseas, do some work experience or an internship um, here in Canberra. Um, it really does start from the top down with our vice chancellor, um, Brian Schmidt, who won a Nobel Prize a number of years ago for his work in astrophysics. Um, he, alongside of all of our deputy vice chancellors and all of our academics, uh, are very dedicated to students um, and to your student experience. So we know that the first thing that you're probably going to look at um, when you're considering where you're going to study will be what is available, what can you actually do as your degree. Um, so we have six general areas of study and then within these areas of study um, we have a multitude of, of disciplines that you can pick and choose from and combine in different ways um, across our different types of degrees. So you may want to do a single degree that is a bachelor's degree, typically taking three, maybe four years. Um, it is your opportunity to focus on one particular area, um, choosing a major and a minor in that, in that area of focus, and then having a number of electives uh, that may support your main area of studies or could include studies from across the campus. ANU have a really good system of allowing students to pick quite a few free electives in all of our different single degrees. So if you were studying a Bachelor of Arts, but you wanted to try and take a few marketing classes, maybe study a language, um, even branch out and take some IT or some chemistry, uh, you could actually fit that within a single degree. We do find um, probably more often than not that mo most of our students will actually take advantage of the opportunity to study two degrees at the same time. Um, we have a flexible double degree system, uh, where as long as you have the higher of the two required selection ranks, you can combine um, any number of our programs. Um, so we have around 50 or so single degrees. Uh, once you start looking at the combinations and how they can all go together, um, there are a few exceptions, these double degrees, but other than that, there's about 750 different ways of a lot of different choices um, that could suit any number of reasons um, for studying doubles. We have students who may be looking for a very general view of the world and will take something like arts and science together. We have students choosing a degree that they really enjoy and maybe also choosing a degree that their parents want them to study. Uh, we have people who might be looking for a very niche job. Um, they have this perfect career in mind and they know that degrees, it will um, that area. But at the end of the day, the real flexibility in this is, is that, you know, whether you have two degrees that are very closely related or two that sit so far apart that no one would expect you to study them together, you are most likely able to do that. So a flexible double program to our single degrees. You 
you do have to choose electives um, that are within your two areas of study. Uh, but to use the example on the screen, if you were studying law and PPE, a very popular combination, um, you could still pick any law. So you do still have a very wide um, range of options within these double degrees. Our last main type of degree is our undergraduate research degrees. Uh, these are also known as Bachelors of Philosophy or PHB. Um, these are aimed at high achievers. You do need to be uh, heading towards an ATAR of 98 or an equivalent with um, some uh, adjustment factors. Um, but if you are, as I say, a highly high achieving, highly motivated student who, who would like to be involved in research as soon as possible and to learn about how research works in a university setting, these degrees give you that firsthand experience um, from the very first week that you're on campus. So you are paired with a mentor, um, someone who will supervise you, uh, start to instruct you on how research works um, and get you involved initially in some ongoing projects on the campus, but eventually work, working towards your own research, but also across the university. So through our um, College of Asia in the Pacific, through our College of Business and Economics, and as well, we have our R&D degrees in engineering and computing science. So you do have the opportunity to be involved in research through the, these degrees um, across whichever discipline you're interested in. We do have one other type of um, program. It's not so much a different degree on within our science faculty. Vertical levels, they're a little bit similar, a different degrees at the end of four years. But in this case, it is the idea that you start in a single science degree. Over the course of the first 18 months, you opt into a related master's program and you start studying those master's subjects in your third year. So this, again, can be a really great pathway into scientific research. It can be a, a, a useful pathway as well if you are looking at a job, at a career that requires postgraduate experience. Um, beyond the time advantage of putting these two degrees together and overlapping them um, and saving yourself at least a year's worth of study, you also save yourself um, some of the tuition fees by studying master's subjects while you are still enrolled as an undergraduate. So if you are particularly interested in science and scientific research, but maybe the PhD program is out of your reach at the moment, or you'd like to study a little first and see whether research is for you, um, this is a good option as well. So beyond your degree, beyond um, the studies that you would undertake at university, we definitely want you to have a whole lot of other experiences, both alongside of your study in support of your subjects and outside of the classroom, um, just generally living life on campus and in, um, in the city of Canberra. We do have our global programs. Um, I know at this stage that internet is a little hard to picture. Um, what I will say is that ANU in the past, we have run some first year travel opportunities, but the majority of students wouldn't tend to travel in their first year. Uh, you would be looking at going on exchange or going on a short program sometimes in the second half of second year, but more into your third and fourth year of study. So with any luck, by the time you are at ANU, we would be well and truly on the way to having our um, 
borders open and therefore our global programs up and running um, at full capacity again. Um, when we do, we have a number of short and long-term programs that run. So our long-term programs are typically our exchange opportunities. Um, we have more than 180 partner universities in 39 different countries that you can choose from uh, to go and study at for six or 12 months. We then have a number of short programs um, that will run in various locations around the world. These could be anywhere for three months, uh, doing anything from, say, attending conferences or networking opportunities, maybe doing an internship or some field studies or some research overseas. Um, we've had people travel to places like Washington to go and work with Congress, um, Congress persons over there. We've had People travel to law, um, to the International Law Organization in Geneva. Um, anthropology students have gone over to places like China. Um, we've had people do Viet uh, environmental field studies in Vietnam. Um, there really are quite a range of these short programs um, that you can undertake to support um, what is happening in your, your degree and really expand your, your career possibilities. Alongside of our global programs, um, we have some really great internship programs as well. We do encourage you to get as many different experiences as possible um, in the workforce while you are studying to help your career, to help your resume, um, to make you as employable as possible when you graduate. You will find that some of our internship programs and our work experience opportunities are built into your degree. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a requirement, for example, in our computing and engineering degrees that you undertake um, at least six months worth of work experience, um, usually in your, your final year of studies. Or you might be interested in the Australian National Internship Program. Um, that is a subject that you can you will apply for a number of the different opportunities um, to that program. Go and work with an organisation and produce some sort of research document that is submitted to the organisation. Um, for their use, but also to the university to be marked um, and counted alongside of your other grades. Um, the Australian National Internship Program, typically um, we have people who study sort of politics and international relations um, do that subject, but it is open to everyone. Um, and that is because the opportunities in that program go anywhere from Parliament House and DFAT and other public service divisions through to embassies and NGOs. Um, so that is a really great subject that you can include within your degree. On the other hand, you might find internship opportunities um, and, and chances to go and either work paid or unpaid at um, a number of organisations around Canberra, um, but they may not be built into your degree. You might have to go and look for them, um, in which case you can talk to the academic college, the faculty that you're studying with, as well as our career centre about um, where those opportunities are, what you need to do to apply to them, um, and when you can undertake them. Sometimes you might be able to fit them in during semester time. Um, sometimes it might be something that you complete during a university break, say over the winter or the summer. But across the board, we definitely have these um, these programs that are, will allow you to get some work experience while you are completing your degree. We then have um, the other things that will make up your experiences on campus. Um, we, as I said at the beginning, we have a relatively small number of students at about 20 to 25,000. About a fifth of those do actually live on the campus. 
Um, but we also have lots of people come to the campus every day to study as well as staff. And because of our location, because we are so central to the city, um, we're right next to the Canberra CBD, um, it means that ANU doesn't tend to be this closed entity. There are events and things happening on the campus that regularly attract um, a mix of students and staff and um, citizens from the city to come and um, enjoy what's happening on campus. So from um, music in public concerts through to things like public lectures from some of our academics, um, book launches, various sports um, and plays that will happen at the university as well. So there really is that wonderful interaction of the student community um, and the university with the rest of the city. As far as activities on campus and those student focused activities, um, if you do decide to live on residence, you will find um, the residential communities will provide you with quite a few events and activities to get involved in. But beyond that, we do have our clubs and societies um, that cater to all of our student body. Of the different clubs and societies available um, for you to join at ANU, there are uh, a little bit over 150 or so social clubs and societies. And on top of that, we then have our 35 sporting clubs as well. So whether you've been doing an activity for years or you would like to try something new, um, there really is a club that suits almost every interest out there. Um, or you can always start one, like to share. Um, you can certainly start a, a club for that. So we have our, um, we've got our board game society. We also have a video game society. Um, we have various performing arts groups from a kabuki club to a Shakespeare club. Um, there's all sorts of um, fan clubs that have sprung up over the years as well. Um, so these really do become, um, I guess, one of the main driving forces behind activities that happen on campus. These groups will host anything from um, games nights, through to uh, sort of formal dinners and events. Um, they will also, some of the clubs that are dedicated to particular disciplines of study may also host um, events or opportunities for you to meet other people studying your degree um, and to potentially get support and help for, for your studies as well. Um, the best way to find out about these groups at this point is if you uh, search for ANU clubs um, or ANUSA, so that's the ANU Student Association who run all of these clubs, um, you can find out more information online. When you come to the campus um, during O week, our orientation week on the Wednesday, there is always a market day, and that is your opportunity to actually go and meet representatives from these clubs to find out more um, and to sign up if you wish. So when you do come to university, um, as I've said, we, you know, we do want you to get your degree, um, to have access to all of these different um, chances to go overseas and to get work experience and, and to interact with other students. But we also <laughs> want you to um, feel happy doing that, to, to feel like you can do all of those things without being completely stressed and pressured um, and certainly without feeling like you're going to collapse in a heap. Um, so do that, we do provide a number of support and guidance services across the campus. Um, we have our Jabal Indigenous Higher Education Centre, so that um, centre provides support specific for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. 
Um, we have our access and inclusion team who can help with special consideration on assignments or exam conditions. Our career centre I mentioned before can assist with things like internships, but they can also help with um, writing a resume, interview skills, finding part-time work, or at the end of this whole thing, finding um, graduate opportunities as well. We have our counselling services available. Um, if you do feel like you need to talk to people and you also find counselling services if you do live on residences within your halls or colleges. Um, our academic skills team uh, can help with writing um, and completing assignments at a university level. And we also have our set for a new program, our mentoring program that works with first year students. Um, I guess the overall message is that, you know, we do want you to come to university. We want you to enjoy your time, but certainly at any point, if you need assistance, if you need help, um, there are lots and lots of people across the university who are there to assist you as well. Um, so where, wherever you end up at university, whether that's at ANU um, or elsewhere, make sure that you're always asking for help as soon as you need it. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that there are a few webinars in this series you would have seen when you signed up um, that will cover some of the things I've already that we have on offer, but certainly a lot of the upcoming webinar series is designed to assist you through our application process. Um, a new applications opened as of today, a direct application process. Um, a new made a, a, a very conscious decision a few years ago to move to a direct application um, that provided um, as much clarity uh, and certainty as we could, as early as we possibly could um, for students across Australia. So we made this application portal um, free for any domestic students um, completing their year 12 to apply directly to ANU. So whether you are studying um, the HSC in New South Wales, the IB, uh, if you're completing your year 12 in Queensland or WA or Tasmania, um, you are able to, to apply directly to the National University. Um, and you let us know all in this one application, not only what degree you're interested in, but any as well. The idea is that we do a round of offers in September um, initially based on your year 11 results um, to see if we can um, make you an offer about three to four months um, before most other universities and certainly almost six months before you're due to start university. So hopefully by receiving that offer, which will have all of those different elements, what degree you're, you've been um, offered a place in, where you would be staying, whether you've received a scholarship, um, you're able to plan ahead a little bit about what your life at ANU might look like. Um, using your year 11 results, we do acknowledge obviously that the last couple of years haven't been ideal um, for studies, but we do hope that this year <laughs> things will start to improve. Um, which is why we will look at everyone in September and we will also look at everyone in December as well. And we will make you the best op um, offer we can based on your best score. If you do receive an offer in September, um, there will not be a specific score attached to that offer. There will not be a requirement to achieve a specific ATAR. You do need to, um, but you do not, if it turns out that the year 12 um, doesn't go quite as planned, uh, you would not lose that offer from September. So going through the timeline, um, 
applications opened as of this morning. You have around two and a half or so months to get everything together. So our applications close as of Monday, the 23rd of May. During that time, you need to make sure that you've submitted all the documents that you need to and completed the entire application and hit submit. Um, and then the university goes to work. We will look at your documents. Um, we will work out all of those offers for degrees and for accommodation and for scholarships, put together our offer letters and release um, though that first round of offers on Monday, the 5th of September. We do recommend that you accept uh, the offer that you receive at that point. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to come to ANU. Uh, you can certainly change your mind, um, both within the ANU application and you can change your preferences and you can still apply to other universities. It just lets us know at that point that you are still interested, that you are still considering ANU and that that offer will be waiting for you at the end of the year. We then have our change of preference window from the 1st of November to the 18th of December. Um, there will be some time in that window as well for uploading additional documents for adjustment factors. When that change of preference windows, window closes um, and as we receive uh, scores, as we receive ATARs from the various states across Australia, we will then start to release offers. Um, we expect that the first lot of offers will come out um, on Friday, the 23rd of December. Um, that tends to be mainly ACT in New South Wales, though some other states may come out on that day. The other main round of offers that we do would be in early January, um, typically somewhere between the 5th and the 7th. Um, there is no advantage or disadvantage. It is literally just which states we have access to and uh, for IB students when those um, results are released and that, that one is always in January. Um, the main thing is just remembering that uh, if you receive an offer in August and you're happy with that offer um, and you've accepted that offer, it will be confirmed in December. Um, if you received your offer in August and you've made any changes to your preferences, that will certainly be reassessed and you may receive a new offer in December. Or if you missed out in August, uh, in September, I should say, um, and then uh, in December when, when scores are released, we can then make you an offer, we will. So it's always that idea that you have two really good chances based on whichever score is the best um, to receive an offer from the ANU. So I'm sure some of you will have looked at your application already, um, but very generally it is divided in half. So the first half is you providing us with all of the documentation and all of the information we need to consider um, providing uh, us the details of what you want from the university. Uh, for all states other than New South Wales HSC students, you will need to upload your year 11 results in the appropriate place. Um, you will, you'll also put in all of your personal details, all of the usual contact details that we require. Um, if you are applying for the Tuckwell Scholarship, I'll talk about that more in a little bit, um, but you will need to um, tick the box that says Tuckwell as well. Um, we then will ask you what co-curricular activities you've been involved in over the past um, three years. So you can list up to five activities that you have participated in during years 10, 11, or 12. Um, the idea behind including these activities is that we want to see um, that you've done something beyond just studying um, and hopefully encourage you to keep doing those activities when you come to university. 
we don't expect you to write long personal essays explaining how um, these activities have contributed to you as a person um, or what skills you have gained. Um, we do want you to demonstrate at least two out of seven um, transferable skills, things like communication and teamwork and critical thinking. Um, but in terms of providing documentation, you simply need um, a piece of paper that has your name, the name of the activity, when it was completed, and it needs to be signed off by someone who can verify that you participated in that activity. It, um, the, these activities really can include anything outside of your usual requirement to go to class and do your homework at school. Um, it could include other activities that occur within school. So if you've been a school captain, a house captain, um, participated in a school-based club. It could also include any academic or artistic competitions that you've done um, or any sports, performing arts or music that you've participated in. You can also talk about any volunteering or social justice activities. Um, if you have completed things like the Duke of Edinburgh Award, um, if you've been part of Scouts, Girl Guides, Cadets, um, there are there's many other activities that I am sure I haven't listed. Um, but as I say, it's, it's anything that you've completed outside of um, normal school responsibilities. So you will probably find that you reach the threshold, um, that two out of seven skills. Um, you should be able to reach it with a single activity. Um, you may want to list two or three. Um, just as a backup in case for any reason um, documentation can't be verified. If you do choose to list all five, um, to take up all five places, these activities, this threshold does not change your ATAR. It really is just about meeting that skills requirement. Um, so if you're listing lots of activities, that is more about you talking about what you're interested in, what you're passionate about. And as I said, any activities that you would like to continue when you come to university. Um, I've already spoken about our sporting clubs, our volunteering, our social clubs that cover performing arts and music and all sorts of other interests. So we do really want you to continue doing activities when you study at university. Um, it will make you a lot happier and healthier if you're not just sitting in your room studying. Um, it does allow you to keep developing these skills um, and to show employers that you are able to balance your studies with other responsibilities and other activities. The other part of the application that you may want to um, include and that you will need documentation for is our adjustment factors. So ANU has the, a national access scheme um, which covers our academic adjustment factors, our performance adjustment factors, and our equity-based adjustment factors. For our subject-based adjustments, um, they will happen at the end of year 12. They are based for certain subjects. You don't need to apply for them. Um, they will happen automatically and be included in your December um, offer if needed. The adjustments that you need to apply for at the moment are any performance-based adjustments for things like music or being an elite athlete and for our equity-based adjustments. Um, our equity categories cover things like um, long-term personal illness, financial hardship, including if your parents received JobKeeper or JobSeeker payments, um, it also covers um, caring responsibilities or being affected by natural disasters. Um, there are also another, a number of other categories. So the best thing at the moment is to either log on to your application and look through those adjustment factor categories or to search for the ANU National 
access scheme or ANU adjustment factors, and you will find a full list of the categories that we look that we use. You can get quite a number of adjustments, so it is very worthwhile applying for them. Um, the equity adjustments in particular, in particular can be used for any of our degrees. You can get up to five equity adjustments for our higher level degrees. So if you are looking at law um, as a single or a double degree or at those undergraduate research degrees, um, or you can get up to 10 equity-based adjustment factors for any of our other degrees. Um, you can't use subject or performance-based adjustments for those higher level degrees, but you can also add <laughs> those ones to the, all of the other degrees um, for a potential maximum of 15 adjustment factors. These are points that are added to your selection rank or to your ATAR, so they really can make a massive difference in terms of your eligibility for your preferred program. Um, you will need to work with your careers advisor, possibly your school documentation. If you have all of your documents together um, and submitted in your application by the end of May, they can then be assessed and included in your September offer. We do know that things, however, will continue to happen during this year um, or that you may not be able to have all of your documents together um, at this stage. And in that case, there will be part of that change of preference window where you can upload additional documents. So as I said, the first half of the application is you telling the university what you want, uh, sorry, what, who you are. <laughs> Second half is what you want. So you do get to let us know what degree you would like to study and you can list up to five preferences. This can include any combination of those degrees I already mentioned, um, our 50 different single degrees, our three double degree groups, which will cover all of the different com possible combinations, um, and our undergraduate research degrees can all be included within your program preferences. I do remind people, um, although it sounds very obvious, to put whatever program you want first, and then have a couple of backups. Um, use as many of the preferences as you like, but give yourself a few options um, and a few chances of receiving an offer um, in both the September and December rounds. Um, because you have those five preferences, they're all ANU preferences, um, it does allow you to really pick and choose um, from all of our different degrees. You are also asked if you want to stay on accommodation. Um, we do know that some people already live in Canberra or may be moving down here to live with family or friends. Um, but certainly in your first year uh, for interstate students, if you would like a place on accommodation, we do have a guarantee um, that if you are moving to Canberra, you will have a warranty your first preference, um, simply because we do have a finite number of beds in any given residence. And we don't, we don't want a hallway or a building to be full of all of the same student. Uh, you would never find a hallway that, for example, would be all students from Sydney studying science. Wherever you live on campus, we aim to create really diverse communities. So they will include people from across both metropolitan and regional areas of Australia and our international students and all studying different degrees. So wherever you live, you will meet a range of um, different people. We do make sure that every single residence has access to support services. Um, so you will have pastoral care and counselling services and senior residents on every single floor if you need assistance. And they all do similar activities. Um, all of our residences participate in a massive inter-hall sports competition. There are events like a big Battle of the Bands concert that happen. Um, they have had competitions in the past that have ranged from 
master chef competitions to spelling bees and talent shows. So there is a really um, vibrant, really um, great participating um, group of uh, often uh, returning students who will then get first year students involved um, and you are able to participate in all sorts of activities across uh, any of the residences. So as I said, we can't always guarantee your first preference, um, but do make sure that you are putting somewhere at the name of a, a hall or a college or a lodge somewhere that you would be happy to stay if you were given that preference. We will try and give you your first preference if we can, and if not, we will then give you the next closest residence. The first main decision that people need to make is whether they want to stay in a catered residence or self-catered. Um, beyond that, it is a choice, uh, or partnered with that, I should say, you may need to look at how much the fees cost. Um, Self-catered residences start from a little over $200 a week in terms of your rent. Catered residences will start from a bit over $400. Um, and the length of contract will also vary from one hall of residence to another. So do have a look at the ANU accommodation um, website. Also tune into the accommodation um, the accommodation webinar that will come up on Wednesday the 6th of April um, to ask any questions you have about the different residences. Um, but just keep an open mind that wherever you stay on residence involved in. The last part of the application is our scholarship section. Um, for the vast majority of our scholarships, ANU have simplified the process so that you don't have to apply to all of them individually. Um, it is actually just one question of, do you want to be considered for all eligible scholarships? And then ANU will use all of the other, all of the information we've already received from you to assign those scholarships where they're needed. Um, the eligibility criteria can include your academic results, any athletic performance. It might include those equity um, considerations, particularly financial hardship um, or the degree that you're preferring. So we already have all of that detail and we use that to, to look through where scholarships um, should be allocated. There are a couple of scholarships where some additional input will be needed from you. So after that application closes in the, at the end of May, you may be contacted during June or July or August um, to provide some additional detail, but the vast majority don't require that. They will happen automatically. Um, the one main exception to that is the Tuckwell Scholarship. Um, this is one of our higher paid scholarships at a little bit of over 23 grand a year for every year that you are studying. Um, it is not the value over 20 grand, but the additional um, support and events that the Tuckwell team put on um, are very appealing to a number of students. Um, we do award 25 of these scholarships every year, uh, but we tend to get around about a thousand or so applicants um, for stage one. So it is a very competitive scholarship. Um, it goes, the selection process goes through stages um, with the, the pool of students becoming smaller after each stage. Uh, this application does involve quite a bit of input, not only from you um, doing a lot of personal reflection, but also um, getting references from your head of year and your principal as you go through the process. So it is very important to talk to your careers advisor um, and other teachers at your school that you need involved um, in getting this application together. The application for Tuckwell, the stage one applications require you to finish your ANU application first. Um, and then you can apply for the Tuckwell stage one. And you need to finish both of those elements, the ANU application and your stage one Tuckwell by Sunday, the 10th of April. Um, for some of you, that will be right at the end of term one. 
Um, for some of you, it will be right before the last week of term one. Um, so it's very important to talk to your teachers as soon as possible. These applications opened as of today for Tuckwell alongside of the ANU application. Um, so the sooner you can make a move on this, the better. Do make sure that you still tick the box that says you want to be considered for all of the other scholarships as well, though, because we will still look at you for all of those other scholarships. Um, particularly if you're, you're unsuccessful at any stage of the Tuckwell process. So following this, I will have a look at the, the Q&A section, Q section in a moment. But following this session, if you do have any further, certainly attend um, the other webinar uh, opportunities throughout this, this application period, um, or you can contact the university directly um, you can contact me and my colleagues, um, Will and Clara, in the future students team through student.recruitment at anu.edu.au, or you may wish to contact our future student inquiry team. Um, they are a team of, um, there's a few core staff, but mostly casually employed ANU students. So if you would like to speak to a current student about their experiences and about um, what life on campus is like, um, you can call their 1-800 number or you can search for ANU contact form um, and fill in the form online to interact with our future student inquiry team. I'm just going to pull up the... Um, we'll try and get through a few of them. Uh, so the first question, just wondering if early entry offers will be released in August or September. Um, my apologies if I kept saying August. Um, previous years, it has been during August, but this year it is definitely Monday the 5th of September that those offers will um, be released. Um, could a parent verify any of your activities? Generally, no, we do require an adult, um, an unrelated adult, ideally, to sign off any co-curricular activities. Um, there is a supplementary form that you can download for our co-curricular requirement um, where you fill in all of the activities and it can be signed off by someone, ideally not a family member, but someone who is willing to verify um, so it doesn't necessarily need to be the person who supervised, but it does need to be someone who is willing to, if the university gave them a, a ring or sent them an email, um, to say that you definitely completed that activity. Do adjustment factors impact your selection rank? Um, yes. Um, as I said, the adjustment factors do uh, get added directly to your selection rank or your ATAS. They really will change um, what programs you are eligible for. If you are eligible for all 15 adjustment factors, for example, for a December offer, um, you could go from having an 80 to a 95. Um, it is a massive um, change and certainly can make a, a huge difference um, for getting into the program that you are interested in. Um, so there's a question here from Michaela um, about that school captain wasn't listed specifically. Um, only other types of captain, house, sports, vice. Um, yes, uh, as a general rule, if school captain isn't listed there, you can certainly enter it. And, uh, and generally across those activities, if you find an activity that is very similar, that you feel fits into these categories, but is not specifically listed, um, you can upload it um, either in that in, in the related category or as an other activity and our admissions team can certainly um, assess it for, for you individually. Um, in terms of where to apply, <laughs> so you can go directly 
go to the ANU website. Um, if you go to anu.edu.au, um, you click on study, apply to ANU um, and follow the prompts, you will find it. Alternately, um, if you search for Google for ANU apply now, um, you will find the direct application. Um, there's a question, how do scholarships work if you defer? Um, I'll actually talk about all three elements here of deferring. So if you decide to defer at the end of this process, um, so it does happen after December offers are released, you can defer your academic offer quite easily. Um, it is just pressing a button <laughs> um, and that will defer your academic offer for up to a year. As far as the other two elements are concerned, you can't defer your, uh, your accommodation offer. You will still be covered by the accommodation guarantee if you choose to um, defer for a year, you can apply then for, or reapply for accommodation. Um, what you might just find is, for example, if you were offered Burton and Garen this year um, and you decline that offer and you reapply, you will still receive a place, but you might receive a place, for example, to um, Lena Carmel. Uh, so it may just change where you stay, um, but you'll certainly still have a place. For scholarships, um, as a general rule, they cannot be deferred either. All of our scholarships will have a list of terms and conditions called the conditions of award. Um, that will let you know what you have to do and what the university is, is responsible for in terms of maintaining any given scholarship. It will say in there whether a scholarship can be deferred. Tuckwell definitely can't and the vast majority of scholarships cannot be deferred. So if you do choose to defer when you have a scholarship, um, you would lose that award and you would need to reapply for any scholarships. Usually in the second half of the year before you start um, at ANU. So if you defer your studies and don't start in 2023, you're gonna start in 2024 instead. Um, in the second half of 2023, that's when you would reapply for any scholarships. That's also when you would reapply for accommodation. Um, so just keep that in mind if you do receive a scholarship or if you receive your, your most preferred accommodation um, and, and really weigh up your options when you come to decide if you're going to defer. Um, has COVID impacted the majority of co-curricular activities throughout? Could I include significant through activities from 2019? So where are we now? We're 2022. No, unfortunately, it really needs to be during years 10, 11 or 12. And I do know um, that uh, COVID has impacted a lot of activities for this particular cohort from year 10 onwards. Um, that is actually part of the reason why the threshold has actually been reduced for this year to two out of seven skills. Previously, it was three out of seven. Um, I can guarantee you that all of the activities listed on the co-curricular schedule for ANU have at least two skills assigned to them. So a single activity will allow you to reach that threshold. Um, and some of the activities... Well, well, there are some activities that do require ongoing participation. Other activities is a one, they're a one-off that you just participate in them once. Um, so academic competitions are a classic. If you've ever done the maths competition or the science competition through your school, you could include those. Um, so really have a close look through um, that uh, the the whole list of, of co-curricular activities. Um, if you're still unsure, um, the best bet will actually be to come along to the session next week. So the, the webinar for next week is a walkthrough of the application. Um, our representative, Sam, um, we've asked him to talk at length about co-curricular activities, and we will make sure um, that we, we talk in detail about 
what activities can be included um, and, and how we've tried to assist um, with where we know that activities have been cut short um, or completely cancelled during the last few years. Um, is there any adjustments for those who went through lockdowns for the past two years? So we know that Victoria obviously was very heavily impacted by lockdowns, as was Sydney towards the end of uh, the middle slash end of last year as well. Um, there aren't any specific adjustments for lockdowns. Um, but what there's, there's two things I can point to there. One is that um, things have been put in place for other adjustment factors, um, particularly JobKeeper and JobSeeker, but also have a look at um, some of the, the health sort of personal illness ones as well. They may apply. But the other thing I will say is that UAC in general have actually taken into account, as have most of the admission centres across Australia, the impact of lockdowns overall on each of these cohorts. So for the past two years, they have actually made very circulated ATARs to compensate for or take into account the effects of lockdowns on students. Um, basically, they're, they're assisting universities by, by helping out all students across their given state. So UAC in New South Wales and ACT, VTAC, for example, in Victoria, um, all of these, these organisations who produce your ATAR are actually helping out with the effects of the lockdown as well. So while there isn't a specific adjustment factor for it, um, there are certainly measures that have been put in place to assist. Um, with the adjustment factors, if you are eligible for five adjustments for being at a regional school, um, that counts towards your, your total number of adjustments. Um, the adjustment factors that we look at in terms of regionality are a little bit different. Um, we tend to look less these days at the particular school that you're at and more at your residential address. But you can certainly find out more information about which adjustment factors, um, particularly how those regional adjustment factors work uh, through the ANU website. Uh, how do you add specific double degrees? This is always my favourite question. I'm happy to, to cover it now. Um, essentially, on your application, when you come to adding programs, um, adding single degrees is very straightforward. Adding flexible doubles, I know, does tend to confuse people. You can only add each double degree group once. And the reason for that is the way that assessment and admissions work is they will make you an offer to the group um, and then it's actually right at the end of the process that you need to make your final selection of degrees. They will ask you to indicate which ones you want now, um, but you can actually change your mind quite easily right up until um, sort of final offers are, are released and you start the enrollment process. So when you do come to add your flexible double, you'll only be able to add the group once, but I recommend um, in, the, in the search box where it says search programs, type in flexible double. It will bring up the three different groups, uh, the law double, the engineering and computing science double, and the arts, social science, business, and science double degree groups. Pick the group um, and then it will, um, once you've added it to your list, you will then be able to indicate which two degrees you want to put together. As I said, Said at any point, if you get lost with that particular step, the flexible double step, um, the walkthrough next week, we will be able to show you exactly how to add um, the the double degree groups if you're if you're still stuck. Um, there's a question here about the Duke of Ed being heavily dis. I, I think that might be disrupted by COVID. Um, essentially, ANU will actually count the silver or the gold, Duke of Ed, as long as it is complete. 
Um, so if you haven't quite completed gold, but you have your silver, please submit that. Um, yeah, if, if you haven't completed it, unfortunately, we can't count it. Same as any of the other activities. If, it, if an activity hasn't been completed, we won't be able to count it towards your award. Um, but you might be able to use individual elements of activities that you've done for, for Duke of Ed towards um, your application. Um, so even keep that in mind. But as I say, it's really just about finding, luckily enough this year, finding one activity um, that will meet, allow you to meet that threshold. Um, so just focus on finding one activity. Maybe Gold Duke of Ed won't cut it um, because it's not complete, but hopefully there will be a number of other activities that you have been able to complete um, over the last few years. That seems to be most of the questions that I can see. Um, and I do know that we've gone a little bit over time. So thank you for sticking around. As I say, we have a series of webinars over the next few weeks that will cover many of the things that I've talked about today in greater detail. Um, so do continue to come along to these webinars or reach out to the ANU um, and we will assist you where we can. But otherwise, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you for your questions and for your attention. Um, and we hope to see you at future webinars and at ANU in the near future. Thank you.